Okay, welcome back to Emmy. This is my Crossing the Streams review for Carter. Streaming on Netflix at the moment. This is written and directed by Byung Gil Young, and this is also credited to be written by Byung Sik Young. This is starring Ju Wong, Kim Bo Min, and Sung J Lee. Ah, I can't really even begin to explain how difficult it was to watch this film. So before I get into the gripes of of what I've seen and how hard it was, I'll give you a quick synopsis so you get on board with what's going on. Okay. Thrown straight into a dangerous mission with none of his memories intact, a man must escape death while trying to figure out who he is, how he ended up here, and who is the mysterious voice in his ear calling him Carter. Okay. So, I start watching this movie three times. I just couldn't watch the movie. It was just, it's painful. It's so painful. It's devastatingly painful to watch. For me, anyway. Because this is, this is a movie that is trying very hard to achieve a particular goal. They've, they've clearly set out this idea to make a, a creative choice to make this move uh, moving entirely as a one shot and if you don't know what a one shot is a one shot is usually a scene where either it is continuously one shot with no cuts or it is stitched together in post in a way to give the impression that all of the things transpiring are happening in one continuous shot now often that's my bag. I love, I love one shots. Uh, particularly uh, Children of Men, uh, Boiling Point. I won't compare Carter to Boiling Point because as opposed to what this is, Boiling Point actually is one continuous shot for like an hour or so. It's just one film where the camera never stops rolling, never stops moving around and stays with everyone. And wild movie, if you haven't seen it, highly recommend especially if you've ever worked in hospitality but i will compare it to children of men because children of men do what this film is trying to do with only three scenes and they're they're basically flawless they're just incredible action incredible scenes with such power and emotion and it's seamless that's really what a, a one shot should be a well executed one shot should be seamless and you have to look really hard to see how they stitch together, which is sometimes can be the fun of watching a film like that. This, it starts with our so-called protagonist. He has been drugged or something, and he's in a place where he's surrounded in blood and his head is scarred, where it looks like something has been implanted in his head. He has no memory of who he was, yet within five minutes, he kills... 30 people in a, in a long drawn out fight scene that transpires over several different areas and it's amazing the action is amazing but it's after every scene should end it became quite apparent that this is not going to stop this is going to be this is one continuous journey that we're going to be taking from now on and i'm now locked in for the ride it's honestly just really sad it's just sad that the isolated action that we're seeing in every scene is amazing. It's crazy. The The acting is fine. It's it's good. It, it, it definitely lends to the Korean style of acting, but it doesn't, it's nowhere near as good as something like, say, you know, I Saw the Devil or or something like Old Boy or anything like that. But it's, it's just bizarre. Like the way that the film is made, there's no real danger because the character just goes from scene to scene doing these insane things and they really lo lose more than 10% health and I'm supposed to believe that they're somehow in danger after the 15th helicopter has exploded and the 12th car has flipped over and the 4,000th henchman has died. It just doesn't have any stakes yet so much is going on. It's sad. It's just too much. But amongst all this like weird espionage thriller storyline where he's supposed to be trying to figure out who he is yet not even think about why he's like mass killing people, not even thinking of why he's become a mass murderer. There, there's also this zombie apocalypse storyline going on where 
he's moving around a zombie apocalypse, which you rarely see them. And when they do show up, you're like, well, what? why? Why is this happening? Like, what? what is it? Why does that even matter? Is it because you're a Korean thriller horror movie? You have to put zombies in? Or does it add this extra wow factor? It's just, I, ugh, it was so difficult. Every time I saw a cut or a bad transition or a weird flat motion blur cut and paste moment it was nauseating it was depressing and it, it makes me feel really bad for the amount of effort that people put into making this movie and it all comes down to the edit it all comes down to people badly planning how each scene will be stitched together so that the shots complement what's happening and then also it's really bad in the way that in stitched together at the end in, in post in editing and the vfx isn't terrible all the time but it's terrible most of the time like 85 percent of the time which is crazy if anything this film is trying to be a game it's trying to be you're the protagonist let's follow the character like as if you're playing the character which is essentially hardcore henry and if you haven't seen Hardcore Henry, that's a criminally underrated movie. It does exactly the same thing, but way better, way more interesting. It's got uh, the guy from District 9, Shalto Copley, I, I think his name is. So funny. He's an amazing role in that movie as well. This movie is Hardcore Henry meets Total Recall uh, in North Korea. It's like someone tried to write a book with cold alphabetic spaghetti by throwing it against the wall. It's just awful. It's a mess. It's and now it stinks. It just in in retrospect, I look back and it it reeks and it's sad. It's such a shame to say that this is a critical miss. Absolutely, I'm I'm really sorry to say it because there's a lot of hard work going into it. So much insanity that went into the action. Dude isn't even like phased by each scene either. Every scene, something happens, and the next scene. He basically doesn't look like anything has happened. Like falling out of a plane, surviving a train crash, surviving 18 car pileups while you were on a motorbike, or being shot. Nothing. It's like, uh, well, that jog was a bit intense. Anyway, uh, that's been my review for Car. Don't watch it, it's shit. But you know the game, smack the like button, show your thanks. Subscribe to be part of the gang. Get chatting, comment below. What are some of your favorite one shots? Let's, I want to hear some of your favorite one shots. I'd like to see that. Anyway, I've been Fletcher. This is Film Fields, and thanks for the likes. Love to the subs. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.